What's up guys, it's Asgard here. Hope you enjoyed our Age of Mythology Fall of the Trident campaign playthrough. I certainly did. Just to wrap it up, we're going to go through each mission turn by turn, talk a little bit about some of the story, and give you guys some of my tips and tricks for how to beat them. Hope you guys enjoy. Mission 1 kicks off the Fall of the Trident campaign with Omens. Quite a simple campaign that you would struggle to beat, in which uh, Atlantis is being attacked by uh, bandits. My strategy for this is build plenty of archers. You do have the opportunity to build economy, but it's probably not needed. Um, just build plenty of archers, feel free to upgrade them, um, and try and use your hero, who is Arkandos, to kill any Krakens that arise, as he has an attack bonus versus myth units. Mission 2 is called Consequences, in which Arkandos is sent to recover the Trident of Atlantis, which was stolen during the bandit raid. During this, um, make sure you send a ship around the north side of the island as you'll find a wreck, which will give you some resources. Also important to wall off both sides of your base, as often people will just wall the top of their base and leave the bottom open to attacks. Always a good idea as well to build a good naval blockade. Make sure you outnumber their ships quite well with um, triremes, as the, they will attack by sea and will often um, attack your buildings as you're very vulnerable on the coast there. It's also worth then, as you already control the waves, attacking through a landing party. So if you load up a transport, you can send it around the far side of the island and drop your units off by the town centre and destroy it quite easily without having to worry about the walls, the town centre and a lot of the units. Mission number three is called Scratching the Surface and is the first mission taking place within the Sea to Troy. For me, the first strategy is to wall off well and defend with towers and troops. Then this map is very much naval again, um, so build some docks down the coast a bit uh, as Ag Agamemnon's base will be attacked by some quite powerful sea units, so you don't want to be caught up in that. Uh, once you've built up a bit of an army and some sea chips, you can quite happily pick off the docks from the sea. Once you pick off the first, pick off the first one, you should be given an army which should be big enough to attack the other base. If it's not, just send your ships around and do the do the job there as well. Number four is called a fine plan, in which you try and besiege one of the gates of Troy. This one is quite tricky in terms of controlling your gold, as there's no obvious gold mines near your base. I would always start this mission by scouting out for gold mines. There is one very much to the west, um, and there is one to the east across the water, so definitely collect those early. There's some more gold mines to the south, um, so definitely destroy the southern town as quickly as possible. You are given siege units and enough units at the start to do that. I found it quite useful at this point to also fish, um, as there's a lot of fish just off your coast. Um, they will be attacked by the town up to the north, so it's worth building a few ships just to defend them, but it's not worth attacking the town at all. Also wall up, always wall up, um, just stops some of the units getting through and killing your villagers. And use bronze at the most opportune time. Usually build a few catapults, roll them in, get a lot of um, foot units in front of them, and use bronze just to hold their units while your catapults destroy the gate. Mission 5 is called Just Enough Rope, in which Ajax is, un is under attack by the Troy troops. You have to go save him and then destroy their forward base. This one is again quite defensive early on, so wall up, um, wall up quite quickly and upgrade those walls, lots of towers, things like that. This also introduces trade as you're given one trade caravan to start. Definitely use these as these are the most sustainable and probably the largest source of gold. There is a secret passage you can attack through, so rather than going through their main gate, um, ride to the north, um, all the way far north, and you'll find a secret passage um, blocked off with a fence uh, and a tower. Destroy that and you'll be in the back of their base. Then focus on destroying the buildings to the north rather than in the town centre, as the troops often ignore you and allow you to pick off the buildings which they won't repair. Mission 6, I hope this works, in which um, Arkandos and Odysseus plan to build a Trojan horse. During this mission, Troy will send out scouting raids of a few cavalry to check on your defences. trick with this is not to let any of those cavalry get back. So very much build up towers, um, very bunched together so that they can kill all of the cavalry. As when, when they're left with two cavalry, they'll ride off and try and alert Troy. Um, also build anti-cavalry cavalry as they will do quite well at chasing those last two cavalry units down. 
um, and use lightning when needed. Uh, it will kill one unit where, that nearly gets back and can sometimes save you. It's also worth using fishing ships in this mission as those fishing ships won't be put off if an army does come to attack you. They can carry on harvesting food and keep your food supplies high. During the second part of this mission, don't be afraid to use those god powers when you get them. Uh, use those meteors on those fortresses just to destroy them that little bit quicker. During mission 7, more bandits. You're in the ruined city of Ikios, trying to save some of the villagers from the bandits that are there. Try and use your heroes as much as possible because they regenerate their health, whereas your other units don't, and you want to save those units for the last battle. Make sure you explore all buildings as there is a plenty vault to the bottom right hand side of the map and there is are a few buildings that will give you some bonus resources. Try to focus on using counter res units and when you get resources try and spend them as the more units you have the more will be saved. And do defend your catapults when they're destroying the stronghold at the end uh, because they will destroy it much faster than your units. Mission 8 is called Bad News, in which you have two bases that are split and you have to work together to work your way up the map to save the remaining villagers from the evil grips of Gargoensis. For this, my biggest tip is to link up as soon as possible. I like to upgrade and use the Underworld Passage just to link them up and help you really focus through one, uh, one route. Um, within Arkansas' base on the right-hand side, try and gather the wood at the back of the map as that will save your villagers and stop them having to garrison uh, whenever there's an attack. Uh, try and focus again on destroying buildings. They will, towards the north of the map or centre of the map, they will have buildings that will produce units. If you destroy these, uh, it'll slow down their attacks and because they won't rebuild them. And do use myth units in this mission as you will find them very effective at destroying those myth units quite easily. Do beware the meteor though, as when you reach the pond, uh, Ajax's base will be attacked by a meteor. So just something to watch out for if your villagers are farming around that town centre. Mission 9 is called Revelations and is the first mission set in Erebus. Gargoensis is sieging the Adamantine Gate with a siege ram. This is, during this mission, it's always good to start by going to the right rather than straight to the gate. Um, here you'll find some boulders that you can destroy and block off one of the passages, which will slow down Gargoensis' reinforcements. Just above the boulders you'll find a path that leads to a Ninian lion that will fight for you. Also try and use your heroes to kill some of the myth units, particularly the Chromiers, as the Chromiers will do devastating damage to some of your foot units. And finally, try and use your archers and centaurs to deal with incoming threats um, as they do less damage to the ram, and try and keep your hoplites and your cavalry and myth units on the, uh, on the ram to destroy it a bit quicker. Do support them with heroes though if needed and if they're under attack by myth units. Mission 10 is called Strangers and also takes place in Erebus. With this mission, always try and scout ahead with the Shades as they have a much, much higher line of sight than any other unit and any other unit will very much get ambushed. They'll also not be attacked by any units, so it allows you to explore the whole map um, and get some really, really good visibility. Try to use heroes rather than shades as your heroes will regenerate their health and the shades are useful when you come across an obstacle that you can't quite get past. Um, and explore all areas with the shades because you will find some nooks and crannies that will give you more shades that are really, really useful. Mission 11 is the first mission of the Egyptian campaign in which you meet Amanra who is digging up the sword of the Guardian. You have to try and defend the dig site. Um, to me, it's very much a case of sending a villager to block off the one remaining uh, pass as quickly as possible and then falling back to defend the actual dig site uh, as it stops your soldiers being too spread out. Try and collect as much gold as possible uh, with all of your villagers until you are forced back to the dig site um, but make sure you wall up the dig site. The moment you retreat um, get all of those villagers on the dig site. Um, you want to try and build defences rather uh, using soldiers rather than um, towers and walls and things as the enemy will attack you with lots of siege units and your defences will fall very quickly to siege if you don't have enough soldiers. Do use all uh, the god power prosperity with your villagers um, when they're all mining gold as that will give you a massive influx of gold that you can then use to spend while you're defending the dig site. Um, and try and build axemen as they are the best unit to counter some of the units that are coming at you. Mission 12 is Light Sleeper, uh, where you have to take the Sword of the Guardian to the Guardian before Kemset's army manages to, to get there first. 
During this, use your heroes to scout ahead, as again they will regenerate health uh, and it helps you to get the maximum number of villagers back to the base, which will give you a little bit of a head start. Try and use your Sphinx as siege units, um, as you can build them quite easily using a bit of food and favour. And do try and focus on destroying buildings as the enemy won't replace them, so it can really, really slow them down. Mission 13 is called Tug of War, in which there is a piece of Osiris. You have to try and get back to your base, while Kemset is trying to do, capture it and take it back to his base. I find use your god powers early to capture the piece straight away before he can get any units there. Using your um, serpents and your mummy's god power will easily claim it and help you get it a good way back before they can react. Try and mass units um, rather than having strong units as more units helps you to slow the enemy down and to claim the Osiris piece. Build Axemen and Animals of Set as you start off with Champion Axemen, so that saves you having to upgrade them and they're just that little bit more powerful. And animals of Set can be built really, really quickly and really cheaply, so you can mass them up quite quite well. Do keep troops by the wagon as it, when it reaches the edge of the canyon, and your bits and some rocks will appear, so they will kill quite a lot of your units and can set you back quite a long way, which is really heartbreaking when you're so close to your gates. Mission 14 is called Isis, hear my plea. Try and wall up as quickly as possible. The enemy will attack you from the southern gate by, the, by your temple. Um, so try and wall up by there in particular. That is where the best gold is. You should be able to get by by having your villagers there. Uh, they should avoid your villagers as much as possible. But do send a man around to collect as many of the monuments as possible, as your real strength here will be the vast amounts of favour that you can gather. And as such, mass produce Sphinx as siege weapons, as they can destroy a lot of the buildings and prevent the enemy from really, really massing units. Mission 15 is called Let's Go, in which having broken out from the prison, you have to recapture the piece of Osiris from Kemsit. I find the best plan for this is to very much rule the waves, um, but make sure you always keep some boats to defend your shipping, fishing ships, as even if you destroy the lighthouse, which is quite easy to do using a seed ship, you will need to defend from Kemsit's uh, base to the, uh, to the east. Try and wall up from the north, as they will send myth units to attack you, but they should be easy to defend using your heroes and your starting units. If you find you need some gold, do attack the base of the north as it is quite easy to chip away and destroy with catapults and your starting base as well. Try and avoid looking at the piece of Osiris until the last possible moment as the moment you scroll your screen over it, it will start a timer until he moves the piece. Every time he moves his pe the piece it gets harder and harder to recapture. Also worth considering the aerial advantage as you can build uh, phoenixes which are very good units as there's not many things that can attack them while they're in the air. Mission 16 is called Good Advice. It is a dream state of Arkantos, which he is visited by Athena and given a whole load of exposition, which is really, really cool. Do use your god powers as needed, particularly early on, as if Arkantos dies, he can't be revived. So if you need to be using Restoration or the Lightning Bolt power, do use them. When you get to the second part of a mission, Collect the relics, uh, you'll find them absolutely everywhere and they'll give really, really good bonuses so try and collect as many as you can with your multitude of heroes. Defend with buildings, so build up some nice walls, some nice towers. Use those lightning um, towers that are already there to your advantage and focus very much on defence. Train lots and lots of anti-cavalry um, as they are quick moving units and the enemy will attack with lots of cavalry. Um, but and when you get into their base to actually attack them, focus on the buildings again as they won't rebuild them once they're destroyed. So you can get a few from the side with your catapults and your starting army, but do really focus on those buildings. Number 17 is the Jackal Stronghold in which Amanwa goes after uh, Kemsit's home island. You'll find a bit of golden town centers if you explore absolutely everywhere. That island is pretty much yours to own when you start, so make sure you explore it all to find all of the gold and town centers, particularly to the south. It's worth building a very strong navy using myth units, uh, as Kemsit will have a very strong navy patrolling, uh, patrolling the channel. Um, so make sure you're able to defeat it and get your army safely across. When you're across, I suggest using phoenixes and war elephants, um, using some villagers, just build a Migdal stronghold over there. Um, that allows you to build war elephants, really, really strong ones, really, really quickly. 
You can also trade if you want. It is one of the longest trade routes you can use and can result in a lot of money being generated. When you do land on Kemsitz Island, try and land to the south of the island as that is the least well defended and the easiest place to get in. Mission 18 is a long way from home where Chiron meets a group of Norsemen chasing after Gargoensis and they are keen to take the head of Osiris out of the Tamarisk tree. There are two temples to the south and to the far west just across the river. Uh, by destroying these you'll stop the mummy attacks which is well worth doing as they will chip away and harass your villagers a bit. Um, when they are destroyed they will pop out with some scarab beetles so make sure you have your heroes and Jarls ready to destroy them. There's a few crossings across the river um, with canyons so make sure you wall them off just to help with your defences as well. Try and build at the back of your base, you're given half of the map to build up, so don't feel everything needs to be at the front. Build fences at the front, but build everything else, so your economy and a lot of your troop production at the back. Um, try and build a mix of towers and soldiers, as the soldiers will help deal with threats, but the towers will help you defend. Number 19 is called Watch That Step, in which Ajax and Arkantos have to besiege the pirate's fortress. Don't be afraid to attack with heroes first as they can take a lot of the damage and help you kill a lot of the units early on. Once you cross the channel, don't be afraid to fish. Although Kamos may own the channel, there's quite a few fishing plots out of range of any of his ships and towers, so don't be afraid to use them. When you advance, I definitely recommend using rocks. That allows you to safely cross back and forth the channel, which allows you to take villagers back to harvest gold and also pick up those free colossi which are waiting for you. Use the catapult quite early on. Uh, if you roll it in carefully into their base without alerting too many soldiers, you can actually destroy his stronghold, which is pretty much the major part that is defending his base. Mission 20 is called Where You Belong, which is the second mission in which uh, you start with two separate bases. It's the final mission of the Egyptian campaign, in my opinion. Uh, so again, like the previous one, try and link up early. By allowing that, it helps move soldiers and villagers between the two. It's also very very easy to wall up um, once you've linked them together but make sure you build a few layers of walls and plenty of towers and have enough soldiers to defend them. Don't worry about losing any of the pieces of, Os uh, of Osiris as they'll just be moved into an area uh, near the middle of the map where you can reclaim them. Um, and But again just build lots and lots of elephants. They're really really strong units and you can build them insanely quickly so it's well worth saving up doing all the techs and building lots and lots of them. Mission 21 is Old Friends, in which you start as a pig, turned into by Circe. Um, Circe. With this mission, there is a secondary town centre, sort of to the south and to the west of where you find the Temple of Zeus. Uh, so don't be afraid to use that. It is much, much more defendable than the one that you're given straight away. Don't be afraid to steal the gold mines. There's some very much to the west, that if you kill his villagers they are ripe for the taking. There's also some to the north of the island that are fairly well defendable as well, as the soldiers usually take a while to get there when they're attacking you. Try and use the land that land to the north as it's much more defendable than the land to the south, as they can only come from one direction and they usually have a bit more base to get through before they get there, so use that for your um, economy. Also try and collect fish as Circe doesn't build any uh, naval units so you're free to fish and collect all the um, food you want off the oceans which means that their constant attacks won't leave you constantly having to ring your bell and stop uh, food production. Mission 22 is the first of the Norse campaign and it's called North. During this mission your troops are scattered during a landslide and you have to destroy the three temples that are in the area in order to progress. My advice for this is to wall up early, wall up hard as their troops will come at you very very quickly and will be very difficult to fend off. As such try and build troops fairly early on as well, pretty much as soon as you get going and have built a town centre you should be looking at getting a longhouse um, in order to start producing a few units. Try and focus on Jarls when you can as the focus of your attacks will be temples, which means myth units will be the thing that comes for you, and these can be upgraded using a lot of the forge upgrades as well. Once you get to see, uh, once you get to siege, focus on the temples to stop the attacks, as they won't use any of the buildings to build units. And once you've destroyed the temples, you can just move on to the next one. 
Mission 23 is the Dwarven Forge. Don't be afraid to use your heroes to scout out the uh, the mines. There is a great dock to the west, which means you can um, fish a few um, bit of food. There's a second town centre, which is much more defendable than the first one, if you want to sacrifice some of the resources around the first one. Try and use Jarls as well, as there will be lots of giants and myth units to attack you, so they'll do, like the previous one, really, really well against those myth units. Towards the uh, east of the map there are also some miners that will uh, that you can go and rescue from some mummies that's some really really useful gold mines and there's also a few relics there that'll help you through the mission as well don't be afraid to take the mine sooner rather than later as the attacks will keep coming um, against your base um, and that'll shift the focus onto the mine rather than your base and help you to build a bit more of an economy. The mine will also give you um, some text that'll really really help you uh, during the uh, during the mission. They also have a market um, a little bit north of the of the mine which if you manage to sneak in and destroy uh, quite early on it will prevent him from upgrading and will stop him from being able to build any fire giants which are the biggest bane of this mission. During mission 24, not from around here, you meet the mysterious Skult who claims to have a banner who that will help you to unify the warring nor northern tribes. Always try and lead on with heroes as you'll bump in again to a lot of giants and myth units so it'll help dispatch those without losing any of your other troops. Focus on, once you manage to get to the base and have to destroy the rubble blocking your way, focus on building mountain giants as you can build these a lot sooner and they'll very much do the job against the rubble. Use your, don't be afraid to use your army to slow down the army of giants that are following you um, as all you need to do is get uh, your hero's scout and the flag bearer through. Don't worry about any of the other guys. Mission 25 is called Welcoming Committee, in which Skult's flag upsets some of the um, some of the clan leaders, causing them to attack you. Uh, so using this to your advantage, you plan to wipe out the local clan leaders. So start off to build a central ambush. Some people like to build one near the first base, but I quite like a central one, as you can use it against all three of the leaders. Um, when you then lure the armies to come and attack you in the middle focus all of your strength on the clan leader as once he is destroyed you'll be given the rest of their forces so you don't particularly want to destroy the rest of the force and then kill the clan leader because you'll lose all those units you could have got and probably lose many of your units at the same time don't be afraid to use your god powers early as although the clan leaders get harder as the game progresses they won't get harder than the units you will acquire so use them early as the earlier parts will usually be a little bit harder 26 is called Union, in which you actually manage to unify some of the tribes by doing some tasks of, tasks for them. The first village you come across will have a mine shortly afterwards. Lead with your heroes into the, into the gold mine as you'll come across a lot of trolls, and they will dispatch the trolls quite easily. That'll give you a really, really good gold supply as there's plenty of dwarves in there and a load of gold that you can mine. Towards the end, don't be afraid to use the god power heroes of Ragnarok just to collect your large number of heroes and send them in to destroy the tower which is the final objective. Mission 27 is called the Well of the Erd in which you find the passage to the underworld that Gargoensis has been looking for. With this one try and wall up quite, uh, quite early as they will try and attack you quite hard early on um, and by there's some really nice cliffs that you can wall up using. Try again to focus on destroying buildings as once they destroy the buildings they won't be able to build rebuild any so that'll really slow down some of their attacks as well later on when you decide to have the final assault use the god power heroes of ragnarok as that'll give you a overwhelming number of units that can really really push the offensive and get you to that gate mission 28 beneath the surface during this mission you have jumped through the well of the erd and found gargoensis is yet again besieging another adamantine gate your job here is only to destroy the fire giants that are guarding the ram rather than destroying the ram itself. You do have a secondary base in which you can send reinforcements through uh, but that will get attacked by some enemies so don't forget to defend that as well. Try and send your heroes together to pick off the army that is defending uh, the ram. Grab a few units, run back to the well, kill them, send them back and keep going until you've destroyed most of the army. 
Once you've destroyed most of the army, advance, uh, so you have the god power Frost. Then use Frost to freeze the rest of the army, but not the fire giants. That way then your heroes can very quickly attack the fire giants, dispatch the fire giants, and finish the mission very, very quickly. Mission 29, Unlikely Heroes, in which you've been chased away from the ram and it's going to carry on destroying the Adamantine Gate. So your only solution is to repair the uh, Hammer of Thor using the World Tree. Early on, I get all of the dwarves to mine the gold, as when you hit certain stages of uh, gold, you will send it to the surface and get some reinforcements. Within those reinforcements, you will find some extra dwarves, so they'll help you to chop the tree a bit quicker and also to mine gold quicker. Do keep Dragonleaf back, um, as you will find that, particularly on harder difficulties, Dragon uh, will come and try and kill your dwarves. Uh, so if she's not there to kill the dragon, you will lose a lot of your dwarves then. When E3 does arrive, there is a gold mine waiting just there. Uh, get him on that, um, as that gold will help as well. Um, also, a little bit of a cheat, but you can delete Brock's ox cart, as when you do that, you'll be given another ox cart and some more dwarves, um, which will just give you a few dwarves bonus and help you chop the tree that a little bit quicker. Number 30, All Is Not Lost. This is the final one within the Norse campaign. Um, once you've built up and when you're feeling quite comfortable and the army has nearly arrived, beware an underworld passage will spawn at the back of your base. I struggle to find it, but make sure you're ready to destroy it or you've got buildings so you can see it when it spawns, um, as they will pump an army through there quite quickly and that can overwhelm you if you're not quick on it. When you're given time to build up, build plenty of walls. I built five layers. Um, don't be afraid to build more, but I would recommend at least three. Do use soldiers to defend alongside towers as they will send quite a few siege rams that will sink through your walls and towers quite quickly if they're not dispatched using human units as well. When you then push the offensive, you should find it quite easy with the army that's given you, given to you, but don't be afraid to use Heroes of Ragnarok as well just to give you that overwhelming advantage and press on to Gargarensis as he were, is very weakly defended and you should overwhelm him quite easily. 31 is the second campaign that takes place within Atlantis. When you start, send on your military boats ahead, as you will find some catapults and fortresses on the coast that you will need to destroy. When you're then looking for the villagers to recapture, don't forget you only need 15. Uh, there's a few with 5 and a few with 4. So the, four, the ones with 4 are less useful, as you only have to capture 3 if you get the 3 fives, whereas capturing any of the 4s mean you'll have to attack 4 places rather than just 3. Don't be afraid to gather fish as well, um, as Gargarensis won't build any naval units, so you are free to gather fish as you please, um, and, and they won't be harassed as much by the land units. There is another town centre to the south that is a bit more defendable uh, and fairly unreachable. There's not a lot of ground there, but if you want to, you can claim that uh, just as a bit of a staging base. Try to build heroes and myth units. Uh, I find, found the Minotaur really, really useful um, as they are good at destroying buildings and they'll take out the um, enemy uh, human units that are built. Don't be afraid to use the Underworld Passage as well. Uh, that can help bypass some of Gargoyens' buildings and soldiers uh, and get those precious villagers back quite quickly uh, and safely. Um, try and focus again on destroying buildings uh, as Gargarensis won't replace them, uh, so they will stop uh, him from getting reinforcements. Final mission is 32, a place in my dreams. Try and wall off both sides, so there is a hole in the cliffs to your north and one to the west. Try and wall them both off just to slow the enemy down. You don't really want to be letting them through early. There are alternatives where you can build a really long wall with just one gap and force them to walk all the way around it, uh, but I like to build both just to stop any units getting through. Focus on mass economy. You really don't need to be sending forward attacks to the plenty vaults. They're not useful. It's not worth it. Just focus on building a lot of villages and harvesting resources um, as many as you can. Only focus on the resources that are needed. Once you've advanced and you've got the 1,000 food to advance, you don't need any more food unless you're planning on building more villages. Uh, so only get those. Once you've got 2,000 gold, that's all you need to advance and to build the wonder. So move on from gold. Focus those villages on grabbing some other resources. Anyway, that is my summary of each of the campaign missions and a few of my tips and tricks to hopefully help you guys get through them fairly easily. Hope you guys enjoyed. If you did, leave a like and subscribe and I'll see you in the next video. Thanks. Bye, guys.